podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. When you're drinking a frozen beverage from McDonald's, your brain may not like how refreshingly cold it is, but the rest of your body, oh yes, it's going to relish every moment of it because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Get all the chill you need for just $1.69. From any size frozen drink, like a frozen Fanta Blue Raspberry, to a new ice-cold lemonade. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Has anyone got any beta blockers? This is the 1865 match report on the day that Forrest went away to Stamford Bridge and drew two all with Chelsea. Also the day in which Notts County uh, got promotion back to the Football League, so congratulations to them. And I've just got enough time to relax before Eurovision starts. Anyway, let's go back to the football. I'm joined by the Married on the Midlands and we'll hear from him in just a few minutes. First of all, the Forest team news. So, Kaylor Navas was in goal, but there was changes in the outfield positions. Just one man difference, but a change of formation. So, Joe Worrell came in for Brennan Johnson, which meant Forest had three central defenders of Worrell, Felipe and Niacate. We had Aurier and Renan Lodi playing as wingbacks. Oral Mangala and Ryan Yates as the deep-lying midfielders, with Gibbs, White and Danilo a little bit further forward, and Taiwo Awonyi up front. Married on the Midlands, hello. It's been a long time since I've spoken to you on here. Hi, yes. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. And, of course, uh, in the meantime, you've been on uh, on the radio with your showbiz friend, Max Rushton, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, I don't look, like to talk about my showbiz friends, but, yeah, I made a quick appearance on TalkSport the other day, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and of course, I think uh, Max was uh, Max was otherwise engaged for much of that program. So, uh, so listeners, if you go onto the Talksport Twitter feed, you can actually hear a snippet of of, of our friend here um, being cut off by Max as he's celebrating a moment. <laughs> so, uh, but let we're not here to talk about your your radio appearances, Married on the Midlands. We're here to talk about the Forest Games. So, with that team news. Were you surprised that Steve Cooper um, changed and went for that slightly more defensive formation? I'm always a little bit surprised when he when he drops Brennan Johnson because he he seems to like to play him a lot, um, and um, I for one would have maybe used him a bit more sparingly uh, during the course of the season, maybe mixed him up with um, Sam Surridge a bit more. But yeah, I'm always a little bit surprised when he's not playing. But thinking of it logically. It's a tough looking away game, um, solidifying that sort of central midfield three um, was seemed like a good idea to me. I was, I was quite pleased with the team. And uh, I would add in there that I wasn't as surprised, uh, partly because Brennan was obviously uh, taken out of the starting lineup for the Liverpool match. But also the other night for all that Brennan did have goal contributions in terms of what he did, uh, um, Amilka and I were were saying, well, you know what, he looks a little bit, he doesn't look 100% fit. And so maybe this is a good opportunity to take him out of the starting line and bring him on with the hope of being an impact sub. So, and of course, that's the way that we used him today. Anyway, let's let's talk about the actual match itself, because it was a bit of a ding dong encounter. And what was very nice is that Forrest uh, in in a break from tradition with their away games this season, managed to take a relatively early lead. So, um, and and I I for one I, I was very pleased with it because it showed that kind of battling quality that sometimes Forest have looked resigned to their fate in away matches, and today they they battled for it. So it was Felipe had already gone close with a near post header from a run and Lodi corner. This time Worrell took a throw in up the right hand side. The ball pinged back and Mangala snapped in with a great challenge. Danilo picked up the loose ball, uh, passed it out to the left hand side for Renan Lodi, who put in a deep cross. Taiwo ran in and basically beat Edward Mendy to the ball and headed home. And yeah, it's it's not necessarily high quality, but it certainly shows the kind of battling qualities that 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 Forrest have lacked so often away from the city ground. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was it came down to a, a team who needed to win and looked motivated against a team that didn't really have anything to play for. Um, uh, we we looked sort of stronger in the challenge at that first sort of 15, 20, 25 minutes. We were sort of pr- really pretty comfortable. And the thing that sort of struck me when I saw the Chelsea team was that 
hang on, I think we've got a chance here because for probably the first time this season, we've got a more experienced lineup than the opposition. Um, and the other thing that struck me once the game got going was just how physically big we are or how physically big we were compared to Chelsea. So down the down the sort of recent years when we played in cup games against top flight teams, that's sort of something that's always struck me is that the top players not only are good technically, but they're always massive as well. The team sort of we came up against were always much more physically uh, stronger than us. And so for us to have sort of built a, a good, strong physical team now was, uh, was uh, pleasing to see. So that point that you were making about Forrest's physicality and and experience well yeah I'm looking at the Chelsea lineup and really Thiago Silva and Raheem Sterling are the only players in there who've got significant significant Premier League experience they brought on Ruben Loftus-Cheek just before half time um, but yeah I mean their, their team didn't have as much experience as you'd expect and I think that showed through and yeah in terms of size yeah, there, there are a lot of players who who maybe you need to be physical in the Premier League. And so when they've got players like João Felix and they've got, uh, so although the um, the left-back Hall, he's a young man and really physically strong. Um, Enzo Fernandes, you know, they're players who haven't acc- acclimatised the Premier League because they haven't played as many matches. So that's an interesting point that you make there. And so therefore, do you think it was fair that Forrest took the lead and fair that Forrest kept the lead in that first half? Yeah, I mean, Ty, Ty was really bullying them, um, the whole sort of Chelsea backline. They just couldn't cope with him. And, and the goal was sort of um, a perfect example of that. He, just, he wanted it more, ran onto a, a sort of a, a hanging cross, really, from Loddy and buried it. And it's we, we after that, we had one or two other chances as well. Uh, Loddy and Danilo made a breakdown left, which ended up in a Danilo shot, as after a, a great pass from Morgan Gibbs-White. Um, uh, near Carty's long throws were sort of causing problems as well. So for all, for all that, we we were looking sort of a stronger um, attacking threat. Chelsea's best hope of getting in, back into the game was really our own frailties. It, it, we just really can't trust our defence. Um, they they there's a, often sort of slow to react when Chelsea did have the ball in sort of advanced midfield areas. And we just kept on giving it away as well. It was so frustrating. So in, in the non, non-pressure situations, um, experienced players like like Aurier just do sort of slack passes, which you'd be embarrassed to do sort of as a, an amateur player playing five a side. It's, it, it's, uh, it's something that's really frustrated me this this season is how poorly we retain the ball, how we sort of find it so difficult just passing it to each other sometimes and and that was possibly Chelsea's best route of getting back into the game during that first half. And having said that it's not as though there was a huge amount of threat because because you know famously Chelsea don't play with a number nine because the only number nine they've got at the moment is Obama Young who's out of favour and it'll cost them a lot of money if he plays any more games and they're reluctant to spend that because of FFP. So the the sort of the only real moment where Navas was called into something approaching action was a header from Joao Felix after a cross from Hall from the left hand side. Felix got to the ball pretty easily, but he couldn't get any purchase on the header. So it's actually a fairly routine save by Navas, I think. Um, one for the cameras, I would say. But yeah, I mean the fact that Chelsea weren't playing with a number nine and. Felix was essentially supposed to be playing as a as a centre of the um, three up front with Madueka on the right and Sterling on the left. They didn't really have any cutting edge, did they? No, I mean, it is not an original observation from us. But yeah, no. without, a striker, <laughs> without a striker, Chelsea did look pretty toothless. Um, you, you're always, I mean, I remember back to the home game and when they were sort of chucking on loads of really expensive, good players. And you think, well, eventually it's bound to fall to one, and then they're, they're bound to fire it in. Um, but no, they're, they they're pretty pretty much toothless uh, that first half. Yeah. Now, I mean, the whole thing about Forrest struggling to retain possession and it leading to chances conceded. If we if we skip forward to the second half, because we're all pretty pleased to go in one nil up at half time, and. 
it felt like it unraveled very, very quickly early in the second half, didn't it? Because Raheem Sterling uh, got two chances and he got two goals. And I think both of them were preventable, preventable, don't you? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about Raheem Sterling. Um, just before he scored the first one, um, there's a brilliant bit of play by Morgan Gibbs-White where he tracked um, Sterling and won the ball off him. And at, at that point, I was thinking, well, that's that's a great point to make on the podcast later on because um, that sort of proves my point of a, a motivated team against an unmotivated team and a player on the up in Morgan Gibbs-White and a player on the down in Sterling because he just didn't look bothered at all, Sterling, and he looked like a shadow of the player that we've seen so over the past 10 years or so. But some really, really shoddy, unprofessional, embarrassing play, I'd say, from from our defence. Um, Go on, talk, 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 us, talk us through the two goals then. Well, the first, the first goal came down the right-hand side. Um, Mangala, for some bewildering reason, just let his runner run straight off. He was right next to him. All he had to do was keep jogging and he just stopped. And... Um, Lodi sort of as is sort of as as he has become sort of as we've as we've sort of become accustomed to seeing him this season, just sort of stands off the uh, attacking player, lets him put the cross in, and um, it's a cut back to into the box where Sterling has a bit of luck where he hits Ryan Yates who's lying on the floor and deflects past uh, Navas and into the top corner. It may well have been going wide, so. There's a bit of a combination of bad luck on our play and bad play, but the but the thing that really sort of really ground my gears was just Mangali standing there, let, letting the Chelsea player run run through. I just I just couldn't understand why why would you do that for all that effort, all that hard work in the first half, just to let it go on something so silly like that. You get you get an absolute bollocking if you're playing five a side doing that. And so for, for professional footballers to keep on doing things like this, and it's not just him; it's every Everybody in our team at some point does stupid things like that. It just it's it's beyond belief. It really is. Hmm. Okay. Let's just jump straight to Chelsea's second goal. Then um, again, talk us through that and talk us through the defensive failings that may or may not have existed. Well, yeah, it was a, it was an odd goal. It was a ball was sort of in a fairly safe area in, in the mid mid midfield area. Aurier suddenly went down on all knee on all fours. I was sort of hunched over the ball for a second, at which point he lost it. And then with, with Chelsea's pace, one just took one pass to get Sterling through on goal. But even then, um, I've forgotten his name. What's our defender's name? Felipe. Felipe was, yeah, he was covering. And so you're thinking, well, there's nothing too wrong here. But then he dove in, he went sliding. He, he, bought, he bought Sterling's, wasn't even really a dummy. He just sort of fainted to shoot a little bit. And... Felix, um, Felipe went flying and then it was Sterling with his confidence well up after the first goal just curled it into the far corner showing the sort of the class player that's that's maybe been missing all season his his, his previous Premier League goal before today was against Boris in the away game so he obviously likes playing against us um, and we've, we've done great for his confidence today Well, I mean, he had an absolute... Um an absolute sitter to score that that opening goal today he he couldn't miss when he had that chance at the city ground so no wonder he enjoys playing against us but this one was nicely taken but as you say a forest masters their own downfall is that reasonable yeah absolutely it's, and it's just it's just two more two more examples to add to the long list of brentford goals um all the mistakes navas has made in recent weeks Joe Worrell diving in, giving away a penalty against Spurs. It's just, it seems to be one every every week or so. Um, it's just a very, very long list of those now. OK, so two things I want to do before we go any further with what happened in the match. First thing I want to ask you is, at that point, did you think, oh, God, we're going to lose this? Yeah, I thought, I thought we're going to be completely dispirited now. And um, it's the same old story. We're just going to sort of struggle to get in, in the Chelsea half and score anything and get anything out of this game. Mm-hmm. OK. And the other question I have for you, I guess, is coming back to what you're saying about these defensive frailties. You look at the fact that we've got 
a number of experienced players at the top level. So we've got one of the world's most decorated goalkeepers. We've got Felipe, who's been an absolute warrior. We've got Nia Kate, who's a class act and um, has, has played and captained in the Bundesliga. We've got Serge Aurier, who's the captain of his country. We've got Renan Lodi, who's played for Brazil. And yet we are conceding these silly goals. What gives? Why are players who are that good and who seem to have good relationships with each other and who seem to, um, you know, form good shapes and everything um, in in defensive positions, why is it? Is it just a lack of concentration? Is it complacency? What is it? Yeah, I think think a lack of concentration. And um, I don't don't know if they're as as good as as all that, the players. I mean, Navas is, is what? How old is he? That thirty-six years old. Um, Felipe, and I know he's been sort of universally popular since he's come in, but I'm I'm just never comfortable when he's when he's playing centre half. I always think he he loses players too easily in the box. He dives in, and I'm I'm never that comfortable when he's been playing. And I'm I'm not one to say it out loud because everybody everybody seems to love him so much, but I've, I I don't want to be the unpopular guy, but um. Or, or he's always had a, had a mistake in, in him. That's why the top, Tottenham fans have hounded him so much. But they they are good, solid professionals and they, and they should be better than this. I just don't know why. It's just a concentration thing. That's maybe why they're playing for us now and not, not for Atletico Madrid or PSG or Real Madrid. Because they, they, they are prone to it. It comes with age. You, you get a bit slower and, and the concentration goes a bit. That's why... Even in non-physical sports like snooker and and darts, it's a young man's game. Even in those games, it's, it, it, these things things do happen. Well, okay. Um, now, I mean, I guess what we do about that uh, in the future will depend upon what division we're in and and a whole a whole host of other factors. Um, let's talk about the balance of the match then after Chelsea scored that second goal and took the lead because. Like you say, it felt, oh gosh, we're going to lose that. But fortunately, we weren't behind for long, were we? No, it was a, it was a surprisingly quick and positive response from us, actually. Um, the ball sort of came in into the box, Chelsea, and they just didn't defend it. Both Ryan Yates and uh, Tywo went for it. And again, sort of our physical power in the air told there. And he just buried it again, like a, like a seasoned... Season striker, another another classy sort of striker's got which is what what something we haven't seen from enough of him this season. But um, and it was, it was really good to see. And um, just for the benefit of any of our listeners who haven't seen the highlights yet, um, a near cut a long throw playing its part again, wasn't there? Yeah, and they, they, it's, 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 I know people have said this already, but it's an odd throw. He takes no run-up and he just gets so much strength on it. It's a a tremendous upper body strength. And uh, the the way he loops it in, the teams just can't can't seem to cope with it. It's it's really a potent weapon for us now. Um, So, yeah, it's it's good to have that. And um, the thing... (laughs) I was joking with the bloke next to me at the uh, at the Southampton match. It's like maybe he he does that throw in without any run up because if he runs up, he'll pull his hamstring again. I don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah. but 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 what's interesting about this is that it's with the near cut a long throw where Forest have capitalised when they have done has been actually on the second ball because everyone gets so scared about defending the first ball they forget to defend the second ball and and when the ball was headed out, it was Mangala who kind of just hooked it back in. And like you say, Yates and the you both going for it. Tyro got his head to it. A nice clean header, did what he had to do. Slightly nervous moment about whether there was an offside, wasn't there? Yeah, I, th- I think they were looking, from from what I can tell, that if maybe Yates t- got a touch on it and that would have made Tyro offside, but uh, thankfully he didn't, he didn't touch it. And uh, yeah, goal stood. Yeah. Okay. So that was with basically half an hour of uh, of normal time still to go. Um, talk to us about the balance of the match and the and the action, if there was any. Which team was more likely to win it? Well, it got sort of back into sort of standard Forest away fair after that. So we were sitting pretty deep, 
um, on the edge of our box. Chelsea had a lot of their ball, so standard Chelsea now. Uh, so passing it from side to side, they brought on some more good players. Um, Ziyech and um, Havertz came on, uh, just your hundred and thirty odd million pounds worth of players. Uh, but Felix and somebody else, I can't remember who went. Madueke. Madueke, who was quite impressive actually. So somebody I've not seen him play before. He was quite good. Um, but yeah. They, it was, they were just sort of passing it from side to side. So it, it, I was I was more scared and tense during the Southampton game because they, they had James Ward Prowse just to whip it in, and sort of the wet the wet night the way it was and everything and sort of the the, the weather it was that night. It was it was it was more of a danger I think on that night than it was today. Again, not having any striker in, in on there on the pitch for Chelsea. Man didn't really have a target for their crosses and passes and things. So it was it, again it was more our players ballsing it up somehow, sort of doing a a, a loose a loose pass out or a, a blind back pass or doing something silly like that. That would have sort of cost us a goal, um, but thankfully it, it petered out to a, a draw, and we we got the point. Although I have to say, the overriding feeling at the end of the match for me was we should have won that, mm. and because um, we that first half display really it, it 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 was enough to win that game, and we 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 should have come out with three points, and I just hope we don't rue that now. Well, we'll come on to that in just a few minutes. Uh, for the record, Forrest left their substitutes a little bit later than usual. So Taiwo Awanyi came off on 81 minutes to be replaced by Brennan Johnson. Uh, there was one moment just in stoppage time, wasn't there, where Mangala tried to play Johnson through. And it's just, it was, you know, the, the, old, the old cliche of fine margins. Um, certainly uh, Colin Frey on Radio Nottingham seemed very excited by that. But uh, no, it's, it's one thing talking about things that didn't actually happen, isn't it? So, well, he, he hit it way too hard. It was, it, was, it, was, it was never even a half chance, but it should have been. I mean, if, if a professional footballer should be able to pull, play a ball through to another professional footballer. But, wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, Czech Kuyate came on for Ryan Yates. He lasted 85 minutes, which uh, is, is a good sign, I hope. Uh, especially banging around how knackered he looked against Southampton. And then in stoppage time, Danile came off so that uh, Harry Toffolo could double up on the left-hand side where Chalabar and Madueke, not Madueke because he'd come off, uh, Chalabar and, and Ziyech uh, were were creating some problems. So Forrest did make those changes. And like against Southampton, I... When we're talking about, well, was it the right thing to do to make the substitutions and the kind of tactical changes that they did? Against Southampton, we basically went 5-4-1 and put on Bolly and had a big, big back five and had six defenders on the pitch, basically. Uh, I think that was probably a reasonable thing to do to stick Toff on and as an extra as an extra man just to kind of double up in those positions, don't you think? Yeah, I think De- De- um, Danilo sort of went. I don't know if he, he may have been feigning injury, for just a waste a bit of time. But he looked like he, he was maybe struggling a little bit for fitness by the end. And Loddy, as we've already said, he's defensively, he just gives a, a bit too much space to the attacking team. So it made sense to uh, shore that side up because everything was coming down that right hand side for Chelsea. Um, so yeah, it, it made sense. We, we it just. Yeah, if we could can hold the ball and sort of pass it out a bit, we maybe would have had a chance to create something more up towards the end. But as we said, it's it's our Achilles heel. We we can't seem to do that. Mm, okay, so with regards to uh, the whole issue about how that leaves Forest in the table, I mean, what we can say is that we are still outside of the relegation zone, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with a news roundup, and we will discuss what Steve Cooper said. The 1865 Match Report. That's the sound of me prepping the grill with Reynolds Wrap. And the sound of me not doing dishes. And the sound of me spending more time outside with my family. Easy prep, cook, and clean. Make time with Reynolds Wrap. I like the sound of that. You're listening to 1865, the Nottingham Forest Podcast. 
Hi, this is Callum with the 1865 News. Not much to report on this week, but we did get some bits from John Percy regarding Morgan Gibbs-White. So he was close to being called up in March by Gareth Southgate based on Mason Mount's injury. Didn't quite go for it, but we learned that if he is to be called up by England at any point, then the valuation to Wolves would go up to towards £35 million if Forrest had to stay in the Premier League this season. So I think there's an extra £5 million that goes to Wolves if we stay up. And then if he gets an England call up, that will close to £35 million. And then the rest seems to be based on Champions League qualification and bits like that. So may never ever come to fruition. Um, and then we also learned that Joe Worrell trained to be a right back um, in training last week when we were short on options, knowing that Serge Aurier is a bit back and forth with his injury issue, um, which is good. He had a really solid game against Southampton at right back, um, and it seems like he could be comfortable filling in there if there are any other issues. Um, but yeah, that's everything, and thank you very much, and I'll be back with the news again soon. OK, thank you very much, Callum. Uh, Married on the Midlands, Steve Cooper, talking to Match of the Day, said, we always hope to get a win. I know that maybe sounds a bit ambitious with how we've been away from home this year, but it's about belief, backing yourselves, and we do have that in the team. There's a bit of disappointment in the dressing room because we scored two goals and being 1-0 up compared to the goals we gave away, they were very different. And... He also mentioned to Sky that he felt slightly disappointed, frankly. He said it's not it's not really a, a great result. Um, so he said, I wouldn't say it's a cracking result. There's a mix of some disappointed guys in the dressing room. And I like that because although we worked hard for what we got, it could have been more. So you said yourself in part one that it's one of those where actually Forrest could have won it, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we should have won it. If we could cut out the city mistakes, there's, there's no way Chelsea were going to score. Um, so architects are of our own downfall once again. Um, but encouraging yeah. that we're making and now taking chances, and, and especially Taiwo's got four goals in 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 two games, got two headers today. He's starting to look like a proper centre forward, isn't he? He is. He's, he's starting to make his sort of physical attributes pay. Um, when you're that big and you come back from injury, it's obviously going to take a bit of time to get going again, get get a bit sort of get your speed up. I was I was maybe toying with with the idea that maybe he was too big the first couple of years. And I was thinking to myself, I remember players like Adi Akambai back in the day who were just too big to play football uh, and made themselves too muscular. And I was I was thinking that may oh, I hope that's not the route Taiwo is going to sort of end up going down. But he's he's looking a bit leaner again and he's uh, looking fitter and faster and and he's he's looking a good player really that the the finish against Southampton was explosive and instinctive and, and again today it was like a goal scorer's goal just no both of them really just showing that sort of desire uh to score goals and and I said earlier on in the season that is he's got the ability to be in the right place at the right time which I think was at the time was more important than sort of him him not always finishing the goals because you can't teach that in a striker so put that together with his physical attributes and we should in theory have a good striker on our hands yeah and we said when we signed him and it was very apparent in the first half of the season he's a bit of a rough diamond so he's showing good center forward attributes he's also the first forest player to score a brace in consecutive premier league games since brian roy in 1995 and I think I agree with you. I think that he's he's showing some really good attributes. He is also one of those players. And this is one of the things with the squad game, isn't it? Sometimes you get players who need a rest and other players, they need to actually play consecutive games to to, to get their groove on. I think Tybo is one of those, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. I think the more, the more he plays, uh, the better, he, better he'll get. And then but remember, he's not played a huge amount of football for a player of his age, really, because he had sort of those problems with getting work permits and things while he was at Liverpool. So he, he missed out on maybe one or two years of developmental football where he could have been playing a bit bit of a higher level. So um, he's to to a certain extent, he's like maybe our manager and one or two of our players. He's learning on the job. Mm, OK. And with regards to where that leaves for us, so... At the time of recording, so we're recording this uh, at half past seven on Saturday evening. So Everton haven't played yet and they're playing Man City. 
and Leicester haven't played. They're playing Liverpool on Monday. So Leeds got a draw away, um, not away, at home to Newcastle. So they've gained a point. Southampton, as you'll probably be aware, have been relegated on 24 points. And Leicester are currently on 30 points in 19th position, um, just below Leeds, who are now on 31. Just above the line are Everton on 32 points, but I say they're playing Man City. And then Forest have 34 points. So we're three points clear of the relegation zone with two games to go. It would have been nice to be on 36, wouldn't it, Marriott on the Midlands? It would. I mean... There's a couple of ways looking at this. I think about the beginning of the season, you'd um, somebody had offered us that with two games to go, we'd be sitting in this position. We would have sort of bitten their hands off. Um, on the flip side, um, Everton's freak result at Brighton and uh, Leeds sort of getting a, an unlikely point today against High Fly Newcastle has sort of put a uh, put the cat amongst the pigeons a little bit there. Um, I can see Leeds winning both their remaining games now because West Ham got nothing to play for and final game lads it's Tottenham so um six points for them I think um Everton similarly okay they'll lose to Man City but then they've got Wolves away again nothing to play for and Bournemouth at home nothing to play for so safe to say they'll get six points as well so we need to get another four points from somewhere I think stay up so we're gonna have to either beat Arsenal and draw at Palace or draw at home to Arsenal and beat Palace it's one of those things isn't it where uh even a couple of weeks ago I think I'd have said well we we discussed in in our uh, Forest Ramble discussion didn't we and um we were saying oh 35 will probably do it and I for quite a while was thinking 34 might do it well now we're on 34 and I agree with you I think we need at least another another three or four points so all of a sudden the kind of the the melee at the bottom of the table uh has has kind of like you say everything's kind of up for grabs still isn't it uh I mean you said the optimistic viewpoint to start off with how are you feeling in terms of your gut instinct I think I think we'll definitely get points out of both games. Whether if we can, whether we can get a win out of one of them, um, that remains to be seen. Um, I, th- I think we can beat Arsenal, and I don't think it's impossible. I think there it's not the Arsenal that were sort of playing two three months ago with sort of their liquid football. Um, so I've, I've watched them recently, and, and they they look like a team that's played a lot of games now. I've suffered a few injuries. I've suffered a loss of form. Um, so that that is winnable with our home form. They, you know, we've we've had a result against Man City. We've we've um, very close to getting a good result against Newcastle. We've beaten Liverpool. So it it is possible. I know. And this type of funny things happen this time of the season. It's um, the Palace is the um, is the uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure what what sort of Palace is going to turn up. They've got a lot of sort of skillful players who just look like they enjoy playing football. Um, on a, and if it's a hot, sunny day, with nothing to worry about, they could, the likes of uh, Eze, um, Zaha, um, uh, uh, Elise, um, I could see them having fun with Boris' <laughs> creaky defence. Yeah. So that um, whole thing, that whole thing about players being on the beach, that can swing both ways, can't it? Because for yeah. those kinds of flair players, once the pressure's off, they might actually just enjoy themselves. Yeah, and um, so that's. I just, I, I just hope we beat Arsenal and uh, Everton and Leeds lose their next game, and it's uh, not nothing to worry about the next day. But it won't be like that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a horrible last day. <laughs> but yeah. as I said after uh, the match against Southampton. The joyous thing is that it is technically in Forest hands. So that's, like you said, that's that's something that we would have wanted if you'd offered this to us, never mind at the start of the season, if you'd offered this to us about four weeks ago, three weeks yeah. ago, I yeah. think we'd all have took that, wouldn't we? We would have done, yeah. And it, but let, 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 it's, it's a cliche, but, but cliches are based on truth. If we, if we end up in the bottom three at the, at the end of the season, it's where we deserve to be because... We have thrown away a lot of points. We've made a lot of mistakes. Um, we've played a lot of poor football at points. So if that's where we where we end up, that's where we deserve to be, and we just we go again. It's it's not the end of the world. 
And just to to finish off with, I mean, obviously, like you say, Chelsea are <laughs> they've they've had nothing to play for for quite a while, and and you know they're on their fourth manager of the season, and so on and so forth. But with Forest, if we ignore that side and we just focus upon Forest. There have been signs after Cooper losing his way a little for a little while, especially after the January transfer window, which is something has been debated ad infinitum. But Cooper has found uh, a set of players and a way of playing that just seems to be being a little bit more effective than it had been for a little while, hasn't he? Yeah, I, mean, I think having having Taiwo a fit Taiwo backs made a big difference. Um, having sort of Ryan Yates coming back in and Danilo, they, there was a point where we weren't playing either of them or Coyote. Um, we were going with, with two in midfield of, of some games during that bad run. Um, well, you look at the uh, energy of Freuler plus Shelby in the middle of the park compared to having Mangala in the pivot with Danilo and Yates either side, and and it's not comparable, is it? And that's been so just, important. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's sort of night and day. Um, having Oreo, oh, oh, Oreo, Oreo back, <laughs> or he crumbles in the box. You know, he's a, he's a, he can't take. Oh, well, he was licked today. Oh yeah, um, um, yeah. Having Oreo is missing as well for a few matches. So it just we we haven't got the strongest squad. Um, when we put when we can get our the sort of strongest eleven or twelve players out there, we're a decent team. We're, mm. we're 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 no worse than sort of half the teams in the Premier League. Then it's just when when the injuries strike, um, that's when we struggle, and it's uh, it's a pity they have struck so viciously this year. And they've tended to be at bad times as well. So when players are really coming into form, so Kiate in the World Cup losing Yates a couple of times, Taiwo just when he was really starting to come into form. Uh, more recently, uh, we we just lost Nico when he was playing. He'd had two or three good matches in a row. So we we have been unfortunate in the, in those respects, you know. Um, and and some of those, of course, there is a whole question about why we're getting so many injuries, but some of those are just unfortunate, like Nico. Um, so they have bitten. And so in that sense, would you say that, you know, yes, no one's going to say Cooper hasn't made mistakes because Cooper, like every single player out there, has made mistakes. But he's had a lot to contend with, hasn't he? He has, yeah. I mean, it, it... I can't think of any other season where we or any other club has had that, that level of injury. I just, I, I can't, see, I can't think it's ever happened before. I'm, I'm sure there's there's, some, there's probably a website out there which gives you this sort of information. But just racking my brain, I can't remember. Well, if we had if we had Tom or Stephen or Adam here, then I'm sure they'd know where to look. But uh, but they're cut from different cloth to what we are. Aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I mean, well, I'll, I'll have to trawl through all the old programs uh, under my bed. <laughs> but um, the um, yeah, it's, it's just it's been very unfortunate because I, I don't think we would have been it as as near. We wouldn't have made as many mistakes if, say, Henderson had been playing. He wouldn't have made as many mistakes as as Navas. If Bolly had been playing, we would have looked more solid, and we wouldn't have shipped so many goals. Um, and um, Yates had been fit, and Danilo had then been playing instead of say Shelby. We we would we wouldn't have lost so many. Hey, games. if we hadn't signed Shelby, then it would have saved that problem, wouldn't it? It would have saved that entirely, yeah. as we've discussed many many times. Anyway, so we will leave it there for today. So I want to say a big thank you to Marid on the Midlands, thank you to Callum for the news roundup, and of course, thank you, listener. As you will expect, we will be back after the Arsenal match. There's so much to play for still, so. We will be back, win, lose or draw, and we are delighted to be outside the relegation zone and let's hope that's where we finish. Thanks for listening. Sports Social Podcast Network.